everyone, welcome to AIBC Summit YouTube channel. Joining me today is Dr. Sarah Mansky, a PhD holder in Global Studies from UC Santa Barbara. She's currently a professor at George Mason University and among others, uh, she's the founder of the International Society of Blockchain Scholars. A true genius pleasure to have you join me today, Dr. Sarah. Thank you, the pleasure is all mine. So looking ahead for Malta Week to be held on the 16th to the 19th of November, um, you've obviously got a wide range of topics that you would be looking at and addressing, covering the uh, capacities of emerging technologies and blockchain technology. But to start off, for our viewers who have yet to know who you are, could you tell us a bit about yourself, your background, what you're working on at the space at the moment? Absolutely. Well, I'm a professor here at George Mason University, and I teach about blockchain and other emergent technologies like AI and virtual reality and, um, you know, the spatial web and how that is going to change our social, political, and economic relationships with each other and our institutions. And I anticipate we're going to see a very exciting upcoming decade with all these technologies converging together um, to make the world a better place. Really looking forward to it. Uh, now, I wanted to start off with the applications of blockchain uh, in building this global technological commonwealth that you're so passionate about. Tell us more about that. Well, blockchain technology is a ledger like any other paper and pencil ledger, but this ledger is held and maintained by all the people who are using it. And that innovation, along with it being encrypted, allows for all kinds of amazing ways to communicate and transact with each other. So now, for the first time in history, we can uh, transfer value from one person to another without ever having to trust any intermediary because we trust the software and we trust the code and so you get all these cool applications like bitcoin and all these other cryptocurrencies that just cut out the big banks and wall street and the state and governments from um dealing with a, a monetary transaction between you and me we just deal with each other directly you can also do amazing things where you um, decentralize the internet, where now there are people working on projects like Holochain, where you can run the internet instead of off of Amazon and Google's big you know, servers, you can run them off the spare computing power of everybody in the network, right? So we run and operate our internet. You can do things like track um, supply chains and, you know, make sure that this product, this diamond, was not mined in a conflict area, right? And the money um, that went to pay for some, you know, um, humanitarian project actually went to the people it was supposed to go to. You could do all kinds of great things. So it allows, it kind of unlocks all the good human potential that we are trying to we're trying to do all these good things in the world and blockchain and uh all these other technologies are going to help us help us realize our true potential as a as a human race perfectly articulated dr sarah now how about spatial web could you tell us more about that and the importance of this emergent technology well the spatial web is going to revolutionize everything i mean it is probably the most exciting technology of all. And it's enabled by this ability of blockchains to track value. And then, you know, you have what are called smart contracts, which are contracts that are on this blockchain software. So you can program in if then type things like if someone, if the price of something goes up, then buy it. Or if um, my, uh, self-driving car runs out of gas, then it can go, or probably electricity, then it can go and charge itself up automatically, right? Without me even having to be a part of the transaction. It can have, you can have, you can program all kinds of material items to, to engage with each other without even human beings being a part of that, like the car charging itself up or my dishwasher ordering more dish soap or whatever. Um, and so the spatial web allows for the 2D web that has unlocked, 
you know, trillions of dollars in value and all kinds of amazing human creativity and communication and just everything the web has unlocked. Now bring that into our physical world and you can imagine how impactful that will be. So we'll wear, you know, VR glasses, virtual reality glasses, and be able to say, encode data on physical objects. So you go to a restaurant and you look at the table and the menu is just right on the table, right? Because you can see it through your glasses. And not only that, but like your friend who went to the restaurant really liked a particular dish and wrote a little note on the table that you can see um, or, or anything else. Like you can imagine you look at the wall in the restaurant and there's all this beautiful virtual art that's there, you know, and rotating and you can listen to music through your glasses um, that you like. And this is all can be tailored to you through your own personal uh, artificial intelligence that knows everything that you like and everything you want to do and make can make recommendations for you about you know, again, like places you could eat, music you like to listen to, maybe movies you'd like to see. So all of this is coming together and it's going to happen in the next, you know, year, <laughs> two or three years. We're going to wake up in five years and be in this amazing world that now is, there's so many other things you can do. You can create digital twins of things. So for instance, you can take and create a digital twin of planet Earth and do all this modeling about you know climate policy and which climate policies will be the best for um for you know mitigating you know catastrophic climate change right we don't want our planet to become uninhabitable so we got to work on this you can also exactly how much carbon each corporation is emitting and tax them you know so they stop doing that right so you can create this amazing uh carbon credit carbon taxing system to try to reduce the amount of um you know warming on the planet you can do that with taxes you can have any um any corporation automatically just have to pay taxes right because we are able to track um so efficiently now with blockchain that you can create all kinds of um, efficiency savings and cut out all of the waste and all of the cost that has to do with accounting and legal and management of you know large you know global bureaucratic systems well spatial web is literally the future based on what you just said dr sarah but how far along are we from integrating this spatial web into the business sector or our daily lives in general you said two to three years is that is that real oh absolutely the code's been written um the company versus.io is going public in september um there are already people thinking about applications for this the the glasses already exist um so i mean people are going to be shocked <laughs> that it, I, it will take a while because every single business, you know, will have to create their own virtual website, right? But it'll be easy. It'll be like, you know, how easy it is to create a website now. It won't be like the early days of the internet where you had to know, you know, HTML and code it yourself. This will be turnkey. You know, you go and it helps you uh, create your own. So I would create maybe a virtual website for my office here. And I could do it probably in, you know, half an hour, right? And I'd have a spatial web, um, you know, website, just like we have URLs right now. And, you know, when the internet first started, it went from, you know, four web pages to all the web pages we have right now really quickly, right? The curve kind of goes zoop like that. And you will see that with the spatial web, it'll happen even faster because it'll be everybody seeing everybody else's cool spatial websites and being like, I have to have one. Every business will have to have a spatial website, right? And everybody will be creating all that amazing content themselves. And they'll all have, you know, self-sovereign ownership over their data. And it'll be, it'll be amazing. So I think it'll, I think once this train gets going, 
there's no stopping it. It'll just take off. And um, you'll see within, I would say, you know, by the end of this time next year, you will be seeing spatial web websites out there. Sounds wonderful. You've just laid out multiple benefits of this spatial web, which is literally the future. But what about the negative impacts? I mean, the least that I think of, will people lose their jobs because of the spatial web? With every new, you know, technology and how it shifts the economy, there's always jobs that are lost, but jobs that are gained, right? And so the, the challenge for us, and I am working on a project to try to address this, right? So, you know, I, I'm thinking about it and trying to work to, um, to lessen the impact, but absolutely um, people will have to think about, okay, how do we transform work and production and how we relate to employment using these new technologies. So right now you have business where you know people show up at work and they get paid a wage and there's an employer and they leave, right? <laughs> but these technologies make it so the workers themselves can cooperatively be the owners. So you can have worker owners in a cooperative fashion that collectively decide you know, how the profits are gonna be distributed, what kind of work they're going to do. And so it really democratizes the, the whole institution of work. And if the workers themselves are in control and they're the ones making the decisions, they're going to make good decisions for themselves, right? And so that's what we need to do is put the, the power of decision making and control over people's lives and their work in, back into their hands, right? And I see that these new technologies have an incredible democratizing and decentralizing potential for power. Because right now, people don't have a lot of control over their lives. They don't have a lot of say in their workplace. Um, they don't have a lot of say in their community. You go and vote every couple years and that's, you know, that's about it, right? And I see that totally flipping and where people, decide what's best for themselves and their family and their communities and together globally we make decisions right and so um yeah if this technology didn't change the relationship we have with power and then absolutely you know people would lose their jobs and that would be terrible and they would have no say and they wouldn't be able to create new jobs that work for them because everybody someone else somewhere else would be making decisions about their lives um so that would be terrible and so i hope we see a different future you know a better one a one where we all have control over over our work and our lives and use this technology to that end Yes, it really sounds exciting nonetheless. And we're very keen to learn more as you speak about this in November. And we're just a few months away. What do you look forward to the conference, Dr. Sarah? Oh, I'm really excited. It's going to be amazing. Anytime I go to these conferences where you have all kind of the leading minds, the leading companies, the leading projects all together, you know, magic happens. <laughs> because, um, you know, rarely do, you know, it's not very often where we all get into room together and can just, you know, talk about what we're working on. And somebody will say, oh, I have a great somebody you need to talk to because they have a solution for your problem and vice versa. Right. So not only will it be fun, but it, it's always very productive. Well, an innovative mind such as yourself, Dr. Sarah, super thrilled to have you as our speaker for Thank the you. upcoming Malta Week. This has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time today and for the very intelligent insights. Uh, till then, hope to catch up again with you real soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have a wonderful day.